Hi, everyone. Welcome to BoatingTechTalk.com. We've got a question from a fellow boat, sailing vessel Rock Chalk. Love it. Jeff, I have a positive disconnect for my shore power. Do I need a separate breaker other than my main breaker on the distribution panel? Okay, this is a hard question to answer, right? Um, first of all, let's put it into context. You know, let's start with the question. Right? The first part of the question says, Jeff, I have a positive disconnect from our shore power. So let's define the words, right? Just to make sure we're on the same page. So here I'm assuming uh, that the vessel owner, when he says positive, is talking about the hot, right? And he says, I've got a hot disconnect for my shore power, right? Shore power being AC120. Now, what's a little bit unusual, uh, generally, um, certainly in North America, disconnects for shore power are actually dual pole, not single pole, right? So you don't have just one breaker, you actually have two breakers that are triggered at one flick of a switch. So it's possible, um, you know, that the owner here is talking about a single breaker that effectively disconnects two things. But in the event that he doesn't, um, I would suggest that you definitely want to have a double pole breaker for your shore power disconnect. Now, the question is, why two shore power breakers, right? Um, you might need another AC breaker if your shore power inlet is 10 feet away from the AC main disconnect, right? The double pole breaker. So if your shore power inlet is far away, you know, at the end of the boat, and it's more than 10 feet of wiring between the inlet to the AC main panel, then you're going to need a second, yes, that's right, a second double pole uh, breaker rated for your shore power connection, 30 amps, 30 amps. So you'll have two 30 amps, one right after the shore power inlet within 10 feet of it, and then you'll have one of the panel. Now, that's not it. Then after that, un unless you have, you're going to need some sort of breaker for individual loads, right? So most likely, and on most of our boats, uh, AC circuits are powered either by 14.3 wire, 12.3, or 10.3, right? 14.3 being 15 amps, which would be an AC outlet that we have, common AC outlets that we have in our homes. 15 amp, which is 14.3. You might have a 12.3, uh, and that's 20 amps, and that might power, for example, a hot water tank, right? Water heater. Or you might have a 10.3, which is 30 amps, which is uh, maybe uh, going to the inverter, for example. It could also be 8.3, but you're going to want to have individual breakers, not hot and neutral anymore. You don't have to, you could, but you're going to want individual breakers for every single circuit, AC circuit on your boat. So for example, on my boat, I have a circuit breaker for all outlets on the starboard side of the boat. And I have another outlet for all port outlets on the boat. I have one for the hot water tank. Um, I have one for the inverter charger, right? Now there could be more. Some of us have water makers, say whatever, you know, it doesn't matter. Whatever you're powering, you need to make sure that the wire size and the breaker are exactly matched. And then you need to have a double pole breaker at the main panel, AC panel. And if your AC inlet to the boat is further away than 10 feet, then you need another one as well. And that's basically the gist of it. So thanks for asking. Good question. And thanks for everyone for listening. And I appreciate it. If you're curious, we've written whole articles about this. Go on our website, search it out. Uh, and we've got a lot of other uh, tech talks about this very topic. If you haven't subscribed to this channel, please do. Um, it actually, it really does make a difference. It encourages us to keep posting. So if you're watching this video and haven't had a chance to subscribe, we really do care because the more of you that are watching, the more of us over here are willing to put, spend more time in creating content. So thanks again.